Welcome back folks and Happy New Year. So let's carry on with our investigation of Operation Amplifiers. In specific, we're going to take some of these wonderful PCB way supplied experimenter boards that I designed and uh, we're going to build up several different uh, variations on the operational amplifier integrator and differentiator circuits. Well actually just two different variations. But, but first, before we do that, why don't we have a look? I want to have a look here and, and see, um, you know, roughly what it is we should expect. So if you look at, um, if you look at this waveform here, ignore this up here, but this square wave here, and this triangle here, and this uh, pseudo sine wave here, let's have a look at them. So let's look at integration first. You can look at uh, integration as, as accumulating some value over some other value. In our case, we're accumulating voltage over time. So what happens is as time goes on at constant voltage here with the square wave, this increases monotonically in a straight line until square wave changes polarity and then decreases. So you're accumulating negative voltages here. Now what happens if we try to integrate that? Well, we're accumulating over time something that's changing. So basically you have something that here is coming down, it's slowing down, it's slowing down, it's accumulating more in the other direction and it keeps going up until it reaches a peak here and then it starts to slow down. It starts, starts to slow down about halfway through this point here, it begins to point back down again and will cross zero when this reaches its minimum. And that's basically what we expect to see. So if we put in a square wave, we expect to see a triangle wave out. If we put in a triangle wave out, we expect to see something that's similar to a sinusoidal wave, but it's not. It's actually parabolic. So this is, this is a par parabola here, and this is a negative parabola here. So that's what we expect to see. But it's very close to uh, a, a sine wave, in appearance anyway. Now, what happens to differentiation? Well, differentiation is just basically the other way around. So we could uh, we could just basically take this sheet, flip it upside down, and say, you know, if we start off with this double parabola here, and we differentiate that, so the rate of change in here at any given time would be described by this line here. And the rate of change on this side would be described by this line. And if we go down further and differentiate this, then the rate of change of this is constant. So you'd get a constant value and then here's a constant again and we get another constant value. The polarities are changed because we're upside down here but this does actually show what we would see with our differentiator because our differentiator is a negative differentiator. Differentiation gives us the rate of change so in a square wave, in an ideal square wave you have an infinite rate of change when the voltage goes from this to this. Ideally that would happen in zero length of time so the change would be infinite and you'd get a differentiation of that would be an infinite pulse down and differentiation of this is an infinite pulse up. However, in the real world, square waves don't change instantly. They change, you know, really fast ones change in a few picoseconds. Normal ones that we see day to day change in nanoseconds or microseconds. So the pulses you get out of our differentiator will be very large, but they won't be infinite. So what I try to do here is show what happens on a continuous basis. So if we have a, a, a regular square wave coming in, we'll get a regular triangle wave coming out. And we have a regular triangular wave coming in, we'll get a semi-sinusoid coming out. That's basically what we, we should be seeing when we cook these things up and put some signals into them. So through the magic of video editing, we have uh, our boards all made up already. Now I've made up uh, one, this board here. This board's made up using the circuits that we, we described in the last video. So these are our ideal integrators and differentiator. And this is the way this board here has been made up. These two have a slight difference, which I'll talk about later. But for now, let's get rid of these. And uh, I'm going to hook this one up. And we'll get it up on the oscilloscope. And we're going to have a look at it. Okay, so here we have up on the scope here. So we have a triangle wave going in. And then coming out of the integrator, we have that semi-sinusoidal waveform. And coming out of the differentiator, we have a square wave. But you can see that there's a little bit of a problem with the square wave. It's got some, uh, it's got some ringing on it. 
and uh, I'll explain that in a minute. Now if we try different waveforms, let's put an actual sine wave in. Let's put a square wave in and see what we get. We can see we're more or less getting what we want out of the integrator. We're getting a, a triangle wave, but out of the differentiator, we're not getting that narrow little pulse I told about. You can really reduce the input down and narrow those pulses up a little bit. The differentiation of that square wave produces an extremely large pulse. If you look at that, we've got a, about uh, 150 millivolts peak to peak going in and coming out, we have about 20 volts peak to peak. So the operation amplifier is doing its best to differentiate a square wave and coming up with a closest to an infinity pulse as it possibly can. So it's basically going rail to rail here. Okay, back to something a little bit normal. Now, what we can do to check uh, further on these uh, integrator and differentiator is to take the output of the integrator, put it into the differentiator, and theoretically what we should get back out will be precisely what we're putting in here. So what we get out here will be precisely what we're putting in here. So for now, I'll have to disconnect the red. And then uncouple the two inputs here. And then jumper the output of this to the jumper to, to the input of this one here. So now you can see we're getting more or less triangle out, but you can see on the downside of that uh, trace, of the blue trace there, we've got what looks like a little bit of oscillation going on. On the leading edge, you can see all that jitter as well. Like there's all sorts of little jackety lines on it. So, well, how do we improve upon this? Well, it's actually quite easy. So if we take our, our ideal circuits here, and in the case of the differentiator here, what we have basically is a high pass filter. So what's happening here is, as the frequency goes up, this capacitor's impedance goes down, down, further, further, and further. So that gain of this operational amplifier, it just keeps increasing without bound until the operational amplifier itself runs into the limits of its power supply and its ability to reproduce the signal. So what that means is that uh, you know at high frequencies there's much more gain, and this is why we're seeing these these glitches on the the differentiator. It's coming out and it's introducing all sorts of high frequency components, and we can we can solve that by putting in a capacitor here, which will limit the gain at high frequencies. So this capacitor here has to be, this capacitor here has to be somewhat smaller than this one. And indeed in our particular case, uh, this is a 0.1 and this is a 0.001. So it's one hundredth the size of this one here. How do we help out on our integrator? Well, we do a very, very similar thing here. We want it now in the integrator, it's just the opposite. At very low frequencies, this gets to be very, very high impedance and the gain goes way, way up. So what can we do here? Well, we can put in a resistor. To limit the gain at low frequencies and to kind of flatten out the response a little bit. And in our case here, we put in a 100K resistor here. And this is a 10K resistor. So, all right, so what difference does that make? Well, let's, uh, let's get one of these other amplifiers in place of this one and have a look. Okay, so here we have uh, a, a situation very similar to what we had with the, that we originally put up on the other board. And we can see here, things are a lot nicer. So we have the triangle wave going in, our semi-sinusoidal waveform coming out of the integrator is much nicer than what it was on the other one and our square wave is well perfectly good enough should we say so let's uh, again try some of the different waveforms um, let's put in the sine wave okay so now we're getting much nicer sine waves back out again and cosine waves uh, things are behaving a little bit better i noticed that one in the middle there coming out of the integrator this one here is uh waving up and down a little just because it's picking up some 60 cycle hum around here but this is a much better situation altogether. Now let's try some of the other waveforms here. We've already saw the triangle. So let's put the square wave in. 
Okay, so now let's, let's have the other situation where we feed the output of the, the integrator into the differentiator. And we'll have a look at that. All right, so here we're putting a square wave in and integrating it. And we'll have a... We're integrating that to a triangle wave. And then we're differentiating it back out to being a square wave. And it coming out pretty much as it went in. That's pretty nice. Let's try a sine wave. Very nice. And a triangle wave. A triangle wave is being integrated into one of those sinusoidal forms. And then that's because it's not sinusoidal, it's coming out the other end as a really perfect triangle wave. So you can see the big improvement just by adding that capacitor in, ca in the case of the differentiator, the resistor in the case of the integrator. And that makes them practical, if not ideal. Now what I'm going to do now is I am going to hook up a pair of these practical ones together just to show you something interesting. Yeah, let me get that done and we'll come right back. Okay, in this arrangement here, we have uh, the two integrators feeding into each other. So I've got a, a square wave going in. This second probe here is on the output of the first integrator. We're getting that triangle wave form. And then on the output of the second in integrator, we're getting that sinusoidal. That's a kind of a function generator there, isn't it? Uh, that's just for fun. Um, I did something, uh, a little project similar to this, way, way, way back in my past using 741s. Because they're, you know, the outputs are at different levels, you, need, you would need a summing amplifier uh, with, with the correct uh, ratios to get uh, each of the outputs being the same. And then you can mix them and match them as you want to produce other waveforms. Quite interesting. So that's it. That's, there's a look at, uh, you know, doing math with operational amplifiers via integration and differentiation. And I'd like to thank PCBWay again, our partner in all of this. And I'd like to thank you guys for coming out to have a, a look. I hope you got something out of this. I know I did. It was, it was fun to touch on this stuff again. And uh, I hope you all have a great new year. Now, I think I'm going to do at least one more video in the Operation Amplifier series because I want to touch upon oscillators. I don't have yet a good idea in my mind what kind of oscillator I'm going to do, but I'll try to find something interesting because uh, there are all sorts of oscillators you can make using operational amplifiers. Anyway, folks, have a great 2024, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.